Now that's, there's warm and cool colours to every single colour. In other words, yellow, yellow ochre would be warm, wouldn't it? And then lemon yellow would be cooler. If you're a watercolourist, chuck away the lemon yellow unless you want to use it as opaque. Go for what Hazel Sowen likes, that aureolin yellow. Beautiful yellow, much nicer than lemon. If you like to use yellow ochre in your skies, try using raw sienna. It's much more transparent, it's much nicer than the uh, yellow ochre. Little things, I mean, there's so much I can keep wittering on about it. Right, so this is a warm grey, and most of our greys are made by brown and blues. It's the simplest way to make your greys. Not black and whites, you know, unless we're doing a specific palette. If I was doing a specific, if I was doing a Rembrandt, then I'd be using the earth colours. I would use burnt sienna for my red. I would use yellow ochre for my yellow and to make it look like chrome yellow. I would use black as my blue and I would mix burnt sienna, so burnt umber, with my black to make the black so it would be warmer. Um, and the orange then you can imagine would be the yellow ochre and those few colours. And you can do a beautiful painting and this is what the, some of the old masters are using, just a limited palette. You can do it very similar with watercolour as well. Again, there are, there are examples in the... Um, what I want is a, is a cooler... That's a little bit more water. That one that's slightly cooler up here. Getting against that. And coming down to something like yellow grey. What have we got? What's that one? That's, that's the one I'm looking for. A slightly browner, just a slight tint of brown coming down into here. <coughs> Just using it across. So this is feathering, and I'm just tickling the tip of the... And when you're doing a sky, say you've got a very massive sky, um, then you can give the whole thing more perspective, as the Dutch landscapists often do, because they've got, as we have in Lincolnshire, massive. They have two-thirds sky and one-third landscape, whereas Todsable was down in Salisbury, the other way around, two-thirds landscape, one-third sky. Um, we can use perspective in the sky as well, and there are two perspectives. There's linear perspective and aerial perspective. Linear perspective is the use of the line going in, and aerial is the use of the colours and light going back. So here I'm using aerial perspective, but if I were to start putting my little strokes look deliberately into short marks and leading the eye into that painting, so it's like almost like a clock, if I start doing my strokes like that just for fun, you can see it's already starting to lead the eye in, even those few small marks. And if I did that the same here, we'd have the same thing going on. Let's start coming down. I want to start on these. I'm not going to do too many verticals yet. I'm still working on my depths of colour here yet. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got to have the technical side of it with the art. You can't, you can't leave out, so I can blend that with my finger. And I can come back in for a stronger colour. You've got to understand the technical side of colours as well as... Um, just the creative side. If you want to paint uh, somebody with a fluorescent orange jacket, then you wouldn't be using fluorescent orange paint. You'd be using the opposites in the colour circle. If you look at Constable's paintings, you'll notice that in nearly every painting, there's a little red figure. How would that be? Red is the opposite in the colour circle to the green. So it makes the green seem more vibrant, and then the red will stand out. So if we wanted a fluorescent orange jacket, we would be using the opposites in the colour circle to it, wouldn't we? The, the, for instance, if I'm doing a hot day on a beach, and I want a really hot, sunny beach, midday, if you look at, again, some of the pictures I've done, then you'll see I'm using a purple shadow underneath, the, uh, against yellow sand, the opposites in the colour circle. And also, the stronger the light on the day, the stronger the difference between the lights and darks. So if we want a very dull day like today, like most of the year here in Lincolnshire, then we would have very close tones and dull colours. But if we want a really bright day, then we want the stronger tones of lights and darks. Talking about Constable again, uh, I'm just going to stumble lightly over that, just a little bit of light through with that grey. Um, and now we're talking here, you see we've got, we've got our mid-tones in there. At this stage already, if I wanted to, I can start bringing my lights in. So I'm just going to bring back a, a cream down there uh, for that mast, straight down. And you see how we can put the light over the top. And that, it's pretty well fixed that pastel, isn't it? And it hasn't come through that. So, and that's quite a chunky pastel as well. Just to give you an idea as I go on, say, we'll see how far I get. But we've got a bit of time left. What's, what's half time? About half past eight, is it? Yes, indeed. Yeah, you want a cup of tea then, don't you? Yeah. We know a longer natter too. <laughs> right. So do come up and have a chat about the brushes and things if you want. 
but you can already see what's happening here. Let's just start. <coughs> I want to start getting a bit of cream and so on to, into there as well. Um, so there are cools and warms in every colour, and there are cools and warms in yellows. There are cools and warms in reds. A warmer red is going to be cadmium. A cooler red is going to go towards the purples. Um, and same with the blues. The cooler blues are going to be towards the turquoise. And one colour is going to enhance another. And so many times we've got a student who's working, and she's fumbling about trying to make something, but it's not that thing that's wrong, it's the thing next to it. I'll give an example of a struggle I had once with the sunrise of Burlington Harbour. And I was putting more and more oranges in to try and get it brighter. I'm just not getting this. What a prat. I should have been putting more and more cools in to make the oranges come out. You know, it's not the thing you think is wrong, always it is. It can be something quite different. Let's get that um, giant bit sort of colour there for the windmill going. I'm going to lose my drawing my windmill totally here. Obviously, I'm just going to have to find it again. But it doesn't matter. I use brash at the moment. I just want to get an undercolour. I want to get an undercolour, a mid-tone in there. I can come back and I can tighten it up. That's the beauty of this way of working with pastels. But can you see how you could bring out a watercolour this way, perhaps? You know, we can go in and put the sparkle in or something. If you've if you missed out doing the light sparkles or highlights, you didn't put the masking fluid in, you don't want to go back in with gouache or acrylics. You could just be touching up with bits of colour of pastel. <coughs> I want to soften that back, so I've got to come back in with some, some cooler colour. I'm just going to blend in a bit of that grey while it's still wet and take it back a bit. One colour nearly always shows into another, so especially in water, obviously. And you're fine with water, but it's never the same tone in reflection. It's always either lighter or darker. It's never identical. Weirdly enough, I don't know why it is, but you know. Um, now we've got this. While I, so I want to start blocking in as fast as I can now and just get rid of all this white paper now. Uh, so we've got. Yes, that's all right. They're a very quick way to work. And I'm right down to there. While I'm at it, I'll just whip that into there as well. I'll just bring it down like a watercolour. Right into wet, and then I'll come back into that in just a moment. And then more into there with the straight onto the wet paper. Use my finger to get some of these verticals to get the feeling of the reflection already. I seem a bit rough and ready at the moment, but I'm going to pull this out in more detail. As they start loose, you can finish tight. If you start tight, you're stuffed. Mm -hmm. If I want to come back into there, I can cut back any time I like. I can come in there whenever I want. You see, and just cut into that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Be brave as well. So, so often, like if you say, how do you dare do that? Well, you can't really go wrong, can you? You can always come back and put paint, paint over it again. Um, that's the same thing, I think, with experimenting. You know, this business of acrylic inks and so on, I was one of the first to do that because I needed to find a way. I had to explore, I had to find a way. And the only way I was going to do that was by experimenting. And what is it after all? It's only a piece of paper, isn't it? I mean, if it goes wrong, what have you lost? Uh, you, can still, you can still work over it if you want to. Working in my verticals at the moment, just feeling the, the water by getting the verticals. And then I'll come across with the horizontals as I go along as well. Look, verticals and horizontals to get that feeling of reflection. People so often go in trying to paint water over the surface all the time. Don't. Um, let's go back to that lovely dark. But I, I did use a dark from here earlier. When there was that, what does that come down here? We've got that mast coming there. Then there's the boom coming down here. I have a lot of affinity with Norfolk because I've taught in both the state and private systems. And since the age of about 10, I've been going to Norfolk. I used to teach sailing there. And, uh, it was nice to go back this time and see all the old haunts. And we'll just rub that <coughs> to get that vertical again, just dull it down a fraction. We've got little lines of <coughs> just so lightly with the pastel, just in all the weight of the pastel alone. You don't have to be too heavy handed with it. Again, I can only see what I'm seeing from the side here, so I'm just hoping it's coming out right. But I might be slightly out of my drawing there, because it should be a bit lower. Not to worry, it'll 
good workout. Straight into the paper there, no water. Need water there. Start to feel this roundness here of this. What are we doing? We've got another five minutes yet. We're just going to start the kettle off, are you? Yeah. We're <laughs> arguing about doing it. They did it last time. <laughs> <laughs> feel around that form. Let's get this um, pink of this in here. I'm not going to bother with, with water on this little bit. Don't need to really. Bring up that dollar grey there. Now oh, what is that? That's a that to do the one yet. Snow. When you're doing snow, remember you're doing light against dark and dark against light. So if you're splattering your snow with a toothbrush or whatever, then you put the light splattering on the darker. If you're doing um, using acrylic or gouache, and the other way around, you're putting your your darks on your lights if it's... Can you still see the drawing of your uh, sails on there? No, nope. <laughs> I've lost them now because it was opaque, but it was just to get me started off in the right place really, but you know, I mean, I, I'd be working like this very loosely if I was work the thing is, I, I'm, it's my drawing now, I'm, from here, that's the correct, but if I come around here, I know that that's far too wide. That's going to come right down to there somewhere. I'm going to have to make adjustments and stand up in parts because I simply can't see. I'm working in perspective. That should be about that. So, but again, it's good for you to see what I'm doing here because, you know, you can see how I can rectify a mistake so easily uh, with just the pasta straight over it. And I don't pretend, you know... It, I've got the same problems going on. I want to chuck my painting over my shoulders the same amount of time as you guys do. <laughs> People often say, oh, well, you know, you'll get it right every time because you're the professional. And you're the no, we struggle just the same way. Things don't always go right. <laughs> um, that's coming up there, around there. And some of them say that to students at times. I mean, you know, they come to me, oh, it's got to be right because we're paying you to do it. It's got to come out. No, not every painting does go right. You know, sometimes it just isn't, isn't going to happen. Just occasionally, you can't even rectify it. Usually, you can bring something out and make it work. But just sometimes, it's not going to happen. You've got to understand that. And all I'm doing at the moment is just building an impression. I'm just, you know, getting the effect of light. I just want to get rid of all of these bits of white and build up. an effective light before I start working in all of the other. Okay, let's come down. And if I just keep building this as a jigsaw, you can see that red's lightened up now. Um, if I just keep building this as a jigsaw, it should all come together. Actually. A couple of minutes and I'll let you go to the toilet. And <laughs> right, are we all right? For this? Right, take a break then. And if you want to come and have a chat with me, by all means do. And have a look at these pastas. Put your finger on them if you want, feel how soft they are, or look at the different brushes. I'll just keep on going. Yeah, it's a
Yeah. Right, do you want me to, to talk on a bit more? So I've just been blocking in while you've been um, having your cups of tea just to try. Now, what I did here was, while it was still wet, I put in the mid tones <coughs> again there and just used the tip of my brush to drag these one into another to get the effects of the grass going on there. Now I can come back into it again um, with my colours and of course I can work onto it now so I can work one into another and I can work this into it one. It's pretty well fixed, like I can just blend it with my finger if I want to. I can come back into here and start to work in the details of the pastel. Either dark over light or light over dark. And the details come at the end so there's all my texture just beginning to build up. So I've got all the blocking in done, just about now, and I can just start to paint in details. So, for instance, here on that bit there, if I want to, I could just start to find this, the, the gunnels here, put a line along there, and these little bits of support that are going all the way around. And I leave my darkest and lightest colours to the very end. You see now how when I start to bring in the darks, then the other colours that seemed very dark a while ago will now go softer. You know, I put a bit of dark up here, for instance, I could put a little black there, and it would make all of that change, change the values to those totally. So we've worked the mid-tones up, and now I'm just going, I'm going through to my darker ones, and then I shall start to go up to the lighter ones as well. Um, but we've got just an effect of light at the moment, so I'm going to start working my colours into this. This boat, for instance, here. Right, I've got the whole thing built in. Now, I just, if I start putting in a couple of the effect of the windows here, come back at the top there, just look at that bit of blue, just put the right shapes in the right places, and the top of a, 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 an awning starts down that side. A little bit of dark at the back of it. Then the boat itself needs to be lightened up, take a bit of the cream along that side of that boat. It's supposed to be reflecting down here a bit, so I'll do a bit down there as well. It won't be too light, I'll just darken it a bit. I'm going to kill it a bit with my finger there, quite deliberately. But that then my dark in between. And like a watercolour, start painting in the negative shapes there. So I'll just go along there, put in the two fenders on the side. They'll reflect straight down into the water, so it's just one line. So I've got my reflection there in one go, the line in between. Up into the bow, drag it down with my finger, a couple of dots and dashes and we've virtually got a little boat in the background. Just make that come out there, a little bit darker behind it to bring it out, back of the boat, dark behind here. I start to look at these masts, I haven't got them in yet but I just wanted to show you the idea of it. We've got a very light orange cream mask going. So I want the darker colour first. Um, right, I better, I better really push this one. It's got a nice bit of fairly bright orange here. And it's coming from here. Under that boat. So I've got to come from there in one. I'm going to have to stand up and see this one. I think. Uh, it's right from up here somewhere. So I've got to go from there down to there. Let's see if I can do a fairly straight line down. See where it ends up. Well, I'm not far off. <laughs> A little bit of a tilt, but that'll do. But if I want to, I can come back and cut into it again. Right, let me got that in. Uh, Does it help that you understand boats? Because <laughs> <laughs> you were saying you talk sailing. Yeah. So does it help? I suppose think? a little bit. I know where things go. Should but be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might be cool. Because my, my, my mask wouldn't have gone there. <laughs> I've got a slight it's curve in it, but not to worry. <laughs> wind's blowing. <laughs> yeah, wind's blowing it. <laughs> That's a trouble I can't. I'm sort of trying to work on it. I've, I've gone in, a, in an art. <coughs> but, um, <coughs> no. Normally when I do a demo like this, and I'd go back at home and I would then tidy it all up at home again afterwards. At the very end of it, I might have a chance. So it, it, it's now it's just, it's just tidying up, isn't it? Literally just that, just tidying up. There's a rope comes in down here. It's darker, I've got to blend in there a bit. Water 
blends in with the collection almost. Again, I'm still playing with these verticals. It's almost nearly all depths and verticals as reflection. There's very little light on top. In fact, there's a few little bits of light grass coming in which are quite fun in the foreground. I'll put those in a minute. I've got that, there's light offenders. You can see just how clean you can put pastel over pastel if you want. Could you actually go in with a wet brush to do something? If I was going to go darker, yeah. You can't put the lights on with a wet brush very easily because it would start to lift it through. So my lights have to go in pure with the with the pastel now. So I'm going to put a bit of cream down there as well. So all of these lights have to be highlights with pastel now. Yeah, but if I wanted to use the brush to pick up any of these darks and these details, yes, I could. In fact, let's just do that. I and mean, then I've got a light it around here. Let's deliberately take some of the dark off here. And uh, we'll look at the bit of rope just there. There you are, look. So yes is the answer, isn't it? <coughs> four stages going up there. Building up uh, color by color, shape by shape. is to enjoy your painting. If you worry too much, if it goes wrong, just go over it again, come back again. <coughs> Could you use pastel over the top of the uh, ordinary acrylic once it's dried, just to go in and, oh, yes. and highlight? Yeah. Even if it's it depends what, it, what it's on, doesn't it? I mean, if the acrylic is shiny, if you use acrylic inks, you're using them thinly. Yeah, and therefore the paper shows. If you're using <coughs> acrylic, acrylic um, paint and it's on paper and it's thin, you could paint the whole background in as long as it's thin. Yeah. But as soon as you go slightly shiny or thicker, it won't take because you've taken away the bite of the paper. <coughs> yeah. it, as I was saying earlier, there's one of my the films on YouTube you can look at where I played with melting oil pastels and I was working oil pastels onto the canvas over gold leaf even and doing a reflection of a woman in a fashion shop and there was, there was models looking out and there was model looking in and reflections on the surface and it was great fun to actually manipulate melted pastel you know the, the little lighters you get for lighting gas with yeah. actually holding the pastel in one hand and melting it on and then manipulating it round with the oil pastel really? and that was great fun, never dries but <laughs> the oil pastel doesn't but very effective and you could varnish it still very effective, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Little wobbles of things too. I mean, you, we're not going to have, normally this is a very um, smooth bit of water, so I can just flick in a little bit of reflection there so that's dead straight. But normally if I was doing, say, a mast here, I would just give a slight wibble, wobble to the, just down in the reflection, as you saw in that watercolour over there, where I've just taken it down with a slight wobble. Um, because you usually there's a very slight ripple somewhere, isn't there? But, uh... I mean, 
even, even if I stop now, you, you've got the idea, haven't you? Which is the point, which is what I'm here for, just to... This thing, and there's, and there's an interesting idea about the reflection. So see here, it's light. That's the um, pulpit bit there, and then we've got a dark reflection below. So although I've got, if I can get it to work with us, uh, although I've got a nice <coughs> light bit here, when it comes down below, the same thing is dark. Attention anyway, isn't it? <laughs> gone quite on me oh, right. <laughs> Now in the foreground we have a few different reeds and things coming up here, so let's see if I can find a bit of something a bit warmer. We'll just take up a bit of reed and stuff coming in, catching the sunlight there. Needs a couple of colours just to bring it forward, maybe. Um, a cooler a bit. Maybe a little bit of sky reflecting on the grass is a bit more there. A little bit of pink here, a little bit. These little bits of colour make a difference because, you know, that warm against that is so different. That it's a cool, light against dark, warm against cool, rough against smooth. We're using the opposites. We're using, look while we're on that orange, um, in fact, let's go back to this orange again. Um, we've got a mast here that comes right down through here, uh, somewhere here. Put that down there. That, that bright pink makes a difference to the blues behind. Should be a little bit more orange, in fact. Got orange are still. And the same down here, it's, it's stronger down the bottom there. So, yes, if you want me back any time, you, you know, you decide, look through my website, see what I do, and see what would be most interesting to you. And that's quite a challenge to me. I mean, I just enjoy, I, I'm just enjoying doing the picture. I just carry on, you know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll discuss any, any, anything with you, of course. And now I need. Now, actually, it becomes like a fencing match because this is one of the reasons I use the longer brushes, those filaments, is I get back from the picture and I'm working out stretch like that. So I would now have to get off my arse. I mean, I can see now the drawing here is needs sorting out, and um, that needs bringing up there. I have to get back from the picture and stand up here and really start to work on it. Yeah. Pull this drawing together. This is this is the awkward bits. It's fine lines like this. I think are the most awkward. If, you, if you're doing a fairly figurative piece, this is where it gets difficult. You have to wobble down the side of the mast. Um, you need to start lightening up the horizon. Now this is where I'm going to start coming in with little bits of feathering. Um, how light's that colour? It's not light enough. I should have a very, very light blue hiding here somewhere, but the passenger got so mucky. That's not the one I want to do. So these final pieces I will not touch again. I want these nice and shiny, nice and lively. Get the texturing. Just feathering along the bottom of these clouds now. If those things are up there, it's darker down here anyway, but I'm going to put a little bit of feathering back into here. Just a little bit of texturing here and there. Whatever is shining down on the objects, whether it be an artificial light or whether it be sunlight, you've got to be reflecting that here somewhere. So if that blue light is coming down onto this, I've got to be putting it in there somewhere. We've got the cool, that blue is going to be reflecting down there in that window sail. These snow scenes I was talking about, I had a, a new student the other day, she's a bit insecure in herself, so she likes to argue a little bit, um, but it's only because of her insecurity, and she does some wonderful paintings. They always turn out great in the end, but halfway through it's, oh, I'm no good, oh, I can't, I've got to I'll keep going, you know. Um, I lost my track of what I was going to say, and that was. I'll come back in a minute to that. Snow scenes. Snow scenes. The age it's happening, you know, and all it's like senility creeping in. Um. You were talking about snow scenes. Oh, that's right, yes. Yeah, she was doing um, a snow scene for this year's Christmas card. Oh, that's something. <coughs> 
cream. So you were telling us about this girl. That <laughs> is, yeah. So yeah, I'm doing the end. So yeah, so she was because she's so used to thinking blue sky, brown tree, green leaves. You know, it's not. How do you paint flesh? Pink? No. You know, it's sea, blue, sand, yellow. No, it doesn't work like that. And snow is the same. Snow is a whole series of reflected colours. Mm -hmm. Even in the shadows, it's reflected light. And it's light pinks, it's light blue, it's creams. And that's the beauty of that technique I've just told you about, of the China Graph Pencil. I say, do take a, look, take a look at my YouTube site, because you can see them being done on there. And the China Graph Pencil and the watercolour and the pastel. The pastel is really, really, really strong with the watercolour. Lovely, you know, ultramarine blues and ceruleans. And, and then you put the light coloured pastels on at the end, your pinks and your creams and your whites at the very end. And the thing just comes to life. And she was, I can't put these colours, that's not snow. And when it was done, and we stood back, and we got rid of the white canvas, which she was thinking was snow, the thing is gorgeous. And that's her Christmas card this year, we printed them off. And it wouldn't actually, they look uh, almost start, too much like the photograph she was working from, because I've got some nice ones of the Top Church for her. Um, you know, and of course, you know, when you make a larger painting smaller, the details go right down, don't they? So she's actually very happy now. But that was the point, that it's colour that's reflecting from places around. And the, even these little bits here, um, if I take some light blue there, they're not all just. We've got the we've got the yellow sun, but we've also got cools going on back here. <coughs> if I put let's put a post here for instance, um, big, a post there in, in, in the light blue, and then on the light side we'll put a bit of a cream. And you see we've got the shadow then and the sun in, in just one go, and it's like mixing greys. I say blues and browns will give you such a variety, and even your greens. Go away and play with your paints and see how many different greens you can make with just your yellows and your blues and then start to add the warm colours as well. And when we've got leaves and things, they aren't just greens. These leaves are reflecting the sky. Even down here, I've got a bit of blue in there because the grass is reflecting the, um, the sky above. I know I'm making things too wide again. I'm coming up to this. I see that door's far too wide. i to bring it down a bit. I'm, I'm fattening things out, looking from the angle here. Oh, we don't have time. Half an hour to go. Will I just fiddle about? No, 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 we'll finish it half an hour. Oh, that's it. Well, I'm just about done right, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Before you start snoring on me. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be back in the home by then. <laughs> well, that includes me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's ever so nice of you to invite me. It's been lovely coming across the meeting, but it's nice to have a nice crowd you know, that turned up for it as well. So I hope I've made it worthwhile for you. And you say, if you want something else, then, then we can look at something totally different. I'm so sure we can do that. Um, I'll just a few more marks. A bit of green to these greys here. I'm just going to put a dark, dark green down here, which you wouldn't think of using there. But remember that that's also the, the light there is also reflecting these trees down below. So you've got a little bit of green there. That just helps to make that. Trees you wouldn't expect. Around here, the same. I've got in these shadows. I've got a little bit of this deep green. Just around these shadows and into there. It's not a colour you think of doing, but and the same into here. Down there. So yes, if, if this is any use to you, if anybody thinks, you know, if you'd like to take this and market it somewhere, somebody will better well, fine. Well, we are going to save it for the Christmas buffet now. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll put your name down. Yeah. <laughs> you can always buy a recipe to <laughs> Signatures is something else. Um, you know, what's your signature? Because the signature is part of the painting. I've done a darker one there, but it's very important where you place the signature as part of the composition. And also, that colour can totally ruin the picture if you get the wrong one. So, you know, what's that at the end of the picture? Is that, that all right for you then, today? Yeah. 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 Yeah.